You are looking at a legal video sneaked out of North Korea. Welcome back, Charlie here. North Korea is the most brutal and secretive country on the planet. The whole country is isolated and there's no access to outside internet. But today you will see some rare videos that have been secretly filmed inside North Korea. From surveillance footage of interrogations and trials by Kim's secret police, to scary TikTok videos filmed inside the DPRK. First, we have to look at this dramatic and heartbreaking video. These four adults and one toddler try to escape North Korea. The young girl is only two years old. They decided to try and escape by going into a Japanese consulate. If they made it through the gate, they would be on Japanese soil and finally escape the hell that is North Korea. Watch what happens as they try to escape. As you can see, the three men make it through, but sadly, the woman and her child do not make it. They're stopped by police and dragged back into North Korea. In the heartbreaking video, the woman and her daughter are crying and screaming. That's because they know that when they're back in North Korea, they will be put in prison, likely inside one of North Korea's infamous labor camps. The penalty for trying to escape North Korea is life in prison. That's terrible for this woman, but even worse for this child. It means this two-year-old girl may spend the rest of her life in prison. The men must also feel very guilty for leaving this woman and her child behind. But sadly, the woman and this girl may not be alive today. According to one expert, these two people face, quote, certain execution. The footage is absolutely heartbreaking, but it's even more scary when you think about what might have happened to this woman and her child. You may be saying, but Charlie, surely North Korea would not send children to prison camps. Well, if you say that, then I challenge you to watch this next video. In 2016, a human rights group leaked this footage from North Korea. It seems to show a child chain gang working on a railway. Many believe these are Kim Jong-un's child slaves. As you can see, they load heavy rocks onto machinery and mend railway tracks with hammers. It's said they are forced to do this work for 10 hours a day in the hot sun, all while Kim Jong-un enjoys his life of luxury. The European Alliance of Human Rights called the footage startling and said it's one of the worst abuses the North Korean government inflicts. That is child labor. The footage was filmed using a secret camera. The children are only eight to nine years old. And as you can see, they're very skinny and have clearly not been fed or looked after well. It's safe to say they really live a miserable existence. While most kids are studying or playing, in North Korea, they are being used as slaves. One activist even said that if these kids don't do enough work, they end up in prison, or worse, get beaten by guards. Moving on, let's look at what happens if you break one of North Korea's many insane rules. What I'm about to show you is some leaked footage from a North Korean interrogation room. This woman tried to escape North Korea and go into China, but she was captured by North Korean guards. The interrogation is so bad, I can't even show you most of it in this video, but you can see just how terrified this woman is. It's safe to say prisoners in North Korea have absolutely no rights. In another interrogation, a man has his arms tied behind his back. He's also blindfolded in a small room. Inside the room is one North Korean guard who yells at him. The only thing decorating the room are portraits of former North Korean leaders. Unsurprisingly, the man is absolutely terrified. Another leaked interrogation from North Korea shows a woman being interviewed by two guards. This young woman tried to escape North Korea to go to China, but she was arrested while trying to escape. At one point, the guards even threatened this woman's life. <laughs> Humanitarian groups say this woman likely faced execution. It really makes you think how someone can be so evil and heartless. Of course, this is very rare footage leaked to a humanitarian organization. But this is happening every day in North Korea. 
We don't think about it because we don't see it, but hopefully this video is a reminder of just how brutal North Korea really is. But now we have to look at what happens in a trial. It's safe to say North Korea does not have a good justice system at all. In fact, they still have public trials. These public trials not only humiliate the supposed criminal, but they also scare everyone else into complying with the government. The public trial was secretly filmed by one very brave person. You may be wondering, what did this criminal actually do? Their crime was a quote, anti-communist act. But the actual crime was that they watched four South Korean movies and gave them to some of their friends. <laughs> That's right, for watching South Korean movies, these people ended up on trial and went to prison. The North Korean government is so scared of their population getting information. They want to keep all of their citizens ignorant of the outside world, and if they see foreign movies, this may interfere with the North Korean government brainwashing. Just imagine being held in a public trial all because you watched a movie. The footage was shared to an activist named Sherry. She escaped North Korea and defected many years ago. According to her, trials like this are commonplace, and the people who watched these movies likely ended up in a North Korean prison camp. Speaking of North Korean propaganda, let's look at one very scary place you're not allowed to go to in North Korea. The main hotel in North Korea is the Yanggakdo International Hotel. This is where many foreign tourists will stay if they visit North Korea. But there is one floor that's missing from the elevator. That is the fifth floor. Many tourists actually try to go to this secret floor. The floor is for staff only, and unlike the rest of the hotel has many propaganda posters for the staff. It also has the hotel's surveillance center. This is where they can look at all of the cameras around the hotel and listen to the secret microphones hidden in every hotel room. In 2016, an American tourist named Otto Warmbier went to this hotel. He snuck into the fifth floor and took a propaganda poster. And because of this, he was arrested and sent to a North Korean prison. One and a half years later, Otto passed away. I covered the full story in a previous video if you want to check that out. But for now, I will show you some secret videos of the fifth floor. As you can see, there are propaganda posters praising the Kim regime and one tourist even took a peek inside their surveillance room. Now let's look at what actually happens inside a real North Korean prison camp. This video shows the true horrors of North Korean prison. In North Korea, if you commit a crime, your entire family goes to prison with you. That's why there are many families and children in this video. Everyone in the prison camp looks very hungry. One video shows workers loading bags with food onto a truck, all while a starving child is sitting by the road. The food is not for the people in the prison, instead it's food they've farmed. That food is then taken to the North Korean elites in Pyongyang. The prisoners are seen working, digging in frozen soil and prisoners being forced to march and pick up stones. Inmates also have to carry wooden logs. But what's life like for North Koreans who aren't in prison? For example, a normal farm worker in rural North Korea. This is an interview with a 23-year-old homeless woman. She works on a farm all day but still can't afford a place to live. She has to sleep outside every night and says that she eats nothing. At one point in the video, police come and harass farm workers. Some of these citizens even argue with the police. It seems North Korean civilians are harassed at every opportunity. One of the worst things about these videos is there's almost nothing we can do to help. In many poor countries, you can donate to charity to help people out. But North Korea has no charities which aren't owned by the government. This means any money donated would go to one of two things. Either funding Kim Jong-un's luxurious lifestyle, or funding North Korea's nuclear missile program. Finally, let's look at some very creepy TikToks posted by North Korea. 
That's right, North Korea have their own TikTok propaganda account. Even though TikTok is banned for normal citizens of the country, certain government officials do have access. The videos seem to show daily North Korean life. But of course, this is cherry-picked to only show good things. They ignore all of the people who are starving and the people in prison camps. Some of the videos even show people who look very scared, almost as if they're being forced to participate in these TikToks. It's very scary how this propaganda might work on some people using TikTok. They may not realize this TikTok account is owned by the North Korean government. You are looking at a dangerous escape from North Korea. Welcome back, Charlie here. North Korea is the most brutal country in the world. It's illegal to film inside without government permission. But today, you're about to see some videos people sneaked out of the Hermit Kingdom. From an American arrested inside North Korea, to corrupt North Korean soldiers caught on camera. First, we have to look at video of the horrible lives of female North Korean soldiers. Everyone in North Korea has a very hard and tough life, but I think it's safe to say North Korea's female army have it the worst. In 2021, someone secretly recorded the harsh daily life of female North Korean soldiers. They were caught on camera putting up wire fences, all to stop people from escaping. The scary part is, these are teenage girls. They're forced to join the military, and soon become manual labor workers for the party, basically turning into Kim Jong-un's personal slave force. Female soldiers are also forced to do farm work every day. And if they don't finish their quota, their entire group gets punished and beaten. They still have no modern transportation, so people have to manually carry things. They're cramped in tiny rooms, which are watched over by male guards at all times. All they have to eat are raw radishes and rice. They can't even imagine a basic snack like a sandwich or an apple. It's also illegal for them to eat these farm products, so they have to make sure that no guards are watching. They also have to chop firewood all day. They're not even allowed to walk as individuals. They all have to march in big groups even when they go to lunch. Female soldiers in North Korea suffer so much hunger and stress that many of them actually stop having their periods. Nearly 30 female soldiers have to be crammed inside one bedroom, and they sleep on mattresses made of bags of rice. There's no running water, so they have to wash outside in streams, meaning they have to bathe with frogs and snakes. A recent study also found female North Korean soldiers get abused. This is by their very own male military commanders. You may think, why not just leave? But sadly, these women have no choice. In North Korea, everyone has to do military service. And the crazy part is, they're not even paid. They have to do this for free. All this while Kim Jong-un has yachts, cars, and mansions, and spends billions every year on missiles. Moving on, we have to look at this prison escape. You are watching a North Korean man escape from a Chinese prison. He scaled a building and then climbed over a fence. The North Korean man then went on the run for 41 days, but was then found by police inside a house near a lake. The man is named Zhu Zhangjie. He had been serving an 11-year sentence in China for escaping North Korea. He only had two years left of his sentence, so why did he try and escape? Well, you see, he actually escaped to get even more time in Chinese prison. That's because once his time in Chinese prison runs out, he will be deported to North Korea. And of course, if that happened, he would have been executed. That's because the punishment for escaping North Korea is execution. This guy would rather stay a prisoner in China forever than ever go back to North Korea. That just goes to show what a brutal country North Korea really is. Next, we have to look at North Korea's extreme military. The North Korean army recently put on a show of force. They did some insane martial arts to show how tough they really are. This involved the soldiers hitting their hands with hammers and breaking many slabs of concrete. Concrete was also broken on soldiers' abs, and bricks were broken on their heads. They also bent metal rods with their necks, and even broke out of metal chains. One soldier even laid down in broken glass, and then had concrete broken over himself. They also did lots of acrobatic flips over cars and obstacles. All this while Kim Jong-un and his cronies watched. They did this to scare their enemies. North Korea's army is often mocked for being weak, 
but clearly these martial arts experts are very dangerous. However, they may not be that useful in a combat situation. In a real war, soldiers don't really use martial arts, instead opting for bullets, grenades, and missiles. It's hard to tell how much of this is real military training, and how much is merely propaganda. But with that being said, I can't even imagine how much pain these soldiers had to go through all to please their evil leader. Watching this sure is scary, but if it really came down to it, these guys would be no match for a predator drone. Moving on, we have to look at this swimming escape. In 2021, a North Korean man made a daring escape. He was caught on camera crossing the demilitarized zone, one of the most heavily guarded areas on Earth. Amazingly, he went undetected for hours. He was wearing a diving suit and fins. He then swam for six hours, and finally crawled through a tunnel to come ashore in South Korea. He triggered many alarms and appeared on surveillance cameras many times, but the man was not noticed until three hours after he escaped. It's amazing how he survived six hours in ice cold water, but thankfully he made it into South Korea and is now safe. Unlike China, South Korea do not deport North Korean defectors, meaning this brave man can now start his new life in the South. Next, we have to look at this arrested American. This man went to North Korea to get arrested on purpose. This man from the USA is named Matthew Miller. In 2014, he traveled to North Korea with the intention of getting arrested and going to jail. He tore up his visa, meaning he couldn't leave, and because of this was arrested by North Korean police. In court, Matthew was sentenced to six years of hard labor, but that's when Matthew revealed this had been his plan all along. He'd heard about how bad North Korean prisons were, and wanted to see if this was true with his own eyes. He also wanted to show the world the injustices the North Korean people have to face. After 212 days in a North Korean in prison camp, he was finally released. But do you think this guy is brave or foolish? Some said what he did was very commendable, while others said risking his life like this was incredibly stupid. The footage of him sitting in North Korean prisons really is scary, and I can only imagine the terrible treatment he experienced inside the North Korean prison camp. Moving on, we have to look at the case of Otto Warmbier. This American student is pleading for his life in North Korea. But two years after this video was filmed, he would be dead. Otto Warmbier was a 22-year-old American college student. In 2015, he took a trip to North Korea, but on New Year's Eve night, he snuck into the staff-only area of his hotel. He then allegedly took a propaganda poster as a cool souvenir. This surveillance video is allegedly him doing that. A few days later, when he was at the airport about to leave, he was approached by two guards. They arrested Otto and took him away. He was then taken to a bizarre press conference. He was forced to confess to his crimes and plead for his life. He was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor and spent one and a half years in a North Korean prison. That was until the US government made a deal to get him freed. But as soon as he was freed, the North Korean government said he was ill. Otto was picked up by plane and taken back to the USA, but a few days later passed away in hospital. Many experts and even the president blamed North Korea for Otto's passing. Otto might have stolen a poster, but North Korea Korea stole his life. Moving on, we have to look at smugglers. These people are not leaving North Korea. Instead, they're North Koreans going from China back into North Korea. But why are they doing this? Well, these guys are actually smugglers. There are many products that North Korea simply does not have, either because they can't afford them or they're simply illegal. These smugglers make their money by secretly leaving to go to China and then sneaking back into North Korea with these goods. They then sell them to people in North Korea. The footage even shows an armed soldier who's been paid to cover their tracks. Many North Korean soldiers are very poor, and that's why they often do accept bribes. Bribing border guards is actually the most common way people escape from North Korea. Finally, we have to look at this soldier escape. This North Korean soldier barely escaped the country. He made a desperate escape over the border into South Korea. He raced a military vehicle down the road and was chased by other North Korean soldiers. He then crashed into 
into a tree and had to make a run for it. The soldiers chasing him open fire, but thankfully the soldier makes it into South Korea. South Korean soldiers then crawl to where the man's lying and gradually pull him into safety. The fact that people risk their lives to try and leave North Korea shows how bad it really is living there. And watching these videos really makes me feel lucky to live where I live today. This American man went to North Korea and regretted it. Welcome back, Charlie here. North Korea is without a doubt the scariest country to live in. Videos of the secretive country are rare, but sometimes brave people leak videos to the outside world. From a mother and daughter caught on camera trying to escape, to child labor being used at Kim Jong-un's personal ski resort. First, we have to look at this arrested American. You are looking at prisoner number 429, or at least that's his name in North Korea. His real name is Kim Dong Chul. He's an American businessman who was born in South Korea. Kim is a Christian, and in 2015 went to North Korea to do missionary work. But in October of 2015, he was arrested by North Korean police. He was accused of being a spy for the USA, despite there being zero evidence of this. In March of 2016, he was forced to go to a press conference organized by North Korea. He was forced to apologize for stealing military secrets and for working as a spy for the USA and South Korea. He was forced to admit to these crimes, despite there being no evidence. After this show trial, Kim was sentenced to 10 years of hard labor, and he was sent to one of North Korea's infamous work camps. Many people never make it out of these camps alive, but thankfully in May of 2018, Mike Pompeo met with Kim Jong-un. After the meeting, several American detainees inside North Korea were released. Thank Thankfully, he was returned to the USA a few days later, which is where he still lives today. But this man must have been absolutely terrified when he was arrested by the North Korean police. In total, he spent 950 days inside a North Korean work camp. Next, we have to look at this woman directing fake traffic. North Korea makes their citizens act out various jobs and roles to make their country seem normal. This is mainly done for foreign visitors. This video was filmed in downtown Pyongyang. The streets are very busy. The cameraman then starts filming the traffic on the road. As soon as the traffic controller sees she's being filmed, she starts working, or at least pretending to. She starts blowing on her whistle and directing traffic, but despite her blowing her whistle and waving her flag, she's actually not doing anything. Cars keep driving past as normal, and people simply ignore her and cross the street anyway. It's almost as if she's pretending to work. The truth is, North Korea doesn't need traffic control officers. Barely anyone in the country has a car. That's why many working people People, including soldiers often have to hitchhike. Also, there are so few cars that children are often seen playing in the roads. Next, we have to look at this homeless family in North Korea. Pyongyang is one of the more affluent areas in North Korea, but clearly not everyone there has money. This video shows a homeless woman and her child. They're both very malnourished. They also live in a tiny shack. They talk about how they sneak out at nighttime to scavenge food, but they say they never go out in the city during the day. That's because they fear they may be arrested and sent to a labor camp, or even worse, killed. It's very depressing to see the poverty that exists inside North Korea's capital. Next, we have to look at a mother and daughter trying to escape North Korea. This video was taken from China. On the other side of this lake is North Korea. The crowd of people here are North Korean soldiers. And standing on the frozen lake is a mother and her daughter. If you look closely, you can see they're being arrested by North Korean police. The mother and daughter bribed one of the North Korean guards to get through. But as they were crossing the river, other guards saw them. The mother and daughter were then arrested. But here's where things get really sad. The daughter is jumping up and down crying. That's because she knows their fate. They will be sent to one of North Korea's infamous work camps. And to make matters worse, all of their family will be imprisoned too. North Korea has what's known as Wanjuaje. This means generations of punishment. For example, if one person goes to prison, their parents and their children will go to prison with them. This is to try and keep their population scared and brainwashed, mainly to make sure that no one ever tries to escape. Now we have to look at these scary videos of child labor being used in North Korea. 
Korea. In 2016, a human rights group leaked this video. It shows a North Korean child chain gang working on a railway. These are Kim Jong-un's child slaves. They mend railway tracks with hammers and have to lift heavy rocks in bags. They're forced to do this work all day in the hot sun, working 10-hour shifts. They're also not paid any money for this work. The footage was filmed with a secret camera. The kids are 8 to 9 years old and are clearly very malnourished. In another video, children were seen being used as slave labor. Children as young as 11 were made to work at Kim Jong-un's elite ski resort. They had to work shoveling snow in sub-zero temperatures, doing this for hours on end. A small group of soldiers watch over them, making sure they don't try to run away. Now, we have to see this video of North Korean soldiers shooting at US soldiers. In 2014, a training video from the North Korean army was released. It showed them firing at cardboard cutouts of US soldiers. The soldiers even had US painted on their helmets. This just shows North Korea's hatred for the USA and the US troops. In another disturbing clip, a North Korean child soldier decapitated a US troop. The young girl did this by knocking the head off an effigy of a US soldier. Now we have to look at this video of people smuggling food into North Korea. It's no secret North Korea lacks food. You only have to look at the average North Korean citizen to realize they're very hungry. Most people in the country are very malnourished, except of course their dear leader. Because there's not enough food, food often has to be smuggled in by other people. Here you can see two people crossing the Chinese border with food, carrying it back into North Korea. They bribed a guard to do this, and then covered up their tracks in the snow using a jacket. It's a lot of work, but it's necessary to keep people alive. If these people didn't break the law, North Koreans simply wouldn't have enough food, which could cause starvation or even death. Now let's look at this empty airport. You may assume this airport is abandoned, but no, this is actually North Korea's busiest airport. You won't have to worry about long queues or missing your flight. That's because there's absolutely no one anywhere. Where. There's barely any staff and even less passengers. North Koreans are not allowed to leave the country, so the airport only exists for foreign visitors. But because it's rare to be allowed inside, these are scarce. When you fly on North Korea's only airline, it's very common to be the only person on the plane. Just imagine how eerie that would be. Now we have to look at this North Korean army drill. In 2016, the North Korean army put on a show of force. They did various bizarre exercises for the camera. This included having large rocks smashed on their stomachs and being beaten with sticks. All this while Kim Jong-un looked on. At one point, a soldier even breaks bricks with his bare hands, and another soldier breaks a pane of glass using his body. Every North Korean citizen is forced to join the army for at least 10 years, which is why the North Korean army has around 1 million troops on the ground. This bizarre propaganda video was likely released to try and scare foreign militaries. Now we have to look at these starving children inside North Korea. This video comes from Heiju City in North Korea. It shows an orphanage filled with starving children. Farmlands in North Korea are sadly not well maintained. The regime simply doesn't care about their people enough, causing many people to starve. Sadly, many of these kids also have diseases which can't be treated. That's because there's not enough medical supplies to go around. In North Korea, when farming fails, the government doesn't give their people more food. Instead, they slash food rations, meaning that people get less food, actually making the problem even worse. All this while Kim Jong-un spends an estimated five $5 million a year importing luxury foods for himself. Finally, let's look at this North Korean propaganda video about the USA. Ever wondered why North Koreans seem to dislike the USA? Well, it's because this is what's shown on North Korean TV. Take a look at this video. These people lie huddled together with their dead friends in blue body bags, drinking coffee cups full of local snow. Many Americans have to live like this daily and are entitled to one cup most days. That was shown on North Korean TV. They claim Americans are homeless and live in tents in the snow. They also have to drink coffee made of snow. They also show people sleeping in sleeping bags, but say the sleeping bags are actually body bags. These blatant lies are to make America look bad, and also make it seem like living in North Korea is the best country ever. If they showed how good America actually was, North Korean people might be annoyed. They'd realize their lives are much worse in North Korea. Sadly, access to the outside world is very limited inside North Korea. So this is all they'll see, meaning that most people in the country actually believe this propaganda. North Korea.
area. It's poor, dilapidated, and completely isolated. Or at least, that's what it's like on the surface. But if we go into cyberspace, North Korea is the most dangerous and feared nation on the entire planet. Kim Jong-un's government has a secretive hacking team called Bureau 121. Charges Thursday against an alleged North Korean hacker. The defendants are part of a North Korean military intelligence agency. Steal $1.3 billion by hacking computers. And creating the WannaCry ransomware. North Korea engaged in this attack. This attack. The thing that sets North Korea apart from other countries is they have their very own state-sponsored hacking group. This group causes a ton of chaos and steals billions of dollars every year. But despite all this, you've probably never heard of them before. They are named the Guardians of Peace. Yes, that is their actual name. The Guardians of Peace are also known as the Who Is Team or the Lazarus Group. They have hacked billion dollar companies, governments around the world, private and central banks, crypto wallets and exchanges, and maybe even you. All this makes the Guardians of Peace and North Korea billions of dollars every year. But what exactly is the Guardians of Peace? They are the biggest cybercrime group in the world. Many other cybercrime groups exist, but in the end, their members normally end up identified and arrested. But this isn't a concern for any members of the Guardians of Peace. That's because they have state backing from the North Korean government, meaning that they will never be extradited to any country that wants them. We actually know the three main people behind the Guardians of Peace. It's believed the head of the Guardians of Peace is Park Jin Hyok. He is a North Korean programmer and hacker. He is said to have masterminded North Korea's hack of Sony Pictures, and was also a key developer of the WannaCry ransom virus. We have this guy's name, photos of him, and even his email addresses, but North Korea denies he even exists. Two more key members of the Guardians of Peace are John Chang Hyok and Kim Il. The Guardians of Peace are associated with Bureau 121. This is North Korea's cyber warfare agency, similar to the USA's NSA. They're also associated with Unit 180. This is a North Korean cyber warfare cell. It's a division of the RGB, which is North Korea's version of the CIA. But why exactly are these hackers so feared? After all, they're not exactly the best or brightest hackers in the world. They've been caught multiple times and their code is fairly basic. The reason why they are so feared is because of how big their rap sheet really is. Their first big hack was in 2009. It was dubbed Operation Troy. They used a computer worm known as MyDoom and carried out various large-scale DDoS attacks of US and South Korean websites. A DDoS or Distributed Denial of Service attack is where you send lots of traffic to one website. This crashes the website which can be seriously bad if it's a bank or government website. It can lead to millions or even billions of dollars of lost revenue. But this was lightweight compared to what the Guardians of Peace had up their sleeve next. In 2013, their attacks began to get more sophisticated. They launched an attack named 10 Days of Rain. This targeted anything digital in South Korea. South Korean media sites were taken down. ATMs and banks were hacked, and critical infrastructure of South Korea was tampered with too. Many don't realize that North Korea and South Korea are technically still at war. They signed a ceasefire in 1953, but in reality the war between North and South Korea is still going on to this day. Later in 2013, things got even worse for South Korea. The Guardians of Peace hacked South Korean broadcast companies, financial institutions, and even an internet service provider. This meant a large portion of South Koreans simply lost access to the internet for some time. But the Guardians of Peace really came to prominence in 2014. This was when Sony Pictures was hacked by North Korea. This was because Sony was about to release a movie named The Interview. The interview starring Seth Rogen and James Franco showed them going to North Korea. The movie was a comedy, but they were very critical of the North Korean government, especially how the North Korean elites live a luxury lifestyle while most of the country is starving. They also showed Kim Jong-un getting blown up, which of course would be outrageous to the North Korean government. 
So, the Guardians of Peace stole large amounts of data from Sony Pictures. They leaked many damning emails, making Sony executives look very bad. They also leaked unreleased movies from Sony, and the personal information of over 4,000 employees. The US called this an act of cyber terrorism, and it really marked the Guardians of Peace as one of the most dangerous hacking groups in the world. Even though they were only hacking a movie studio, it was still an attack on the USA. This was something we had never seen from a state actor before. The Guardians of Peace demanded Sony Pictures not release the interview. Sony actually obliged and said they would not show the movie in theaters. This response was heavily criticized, as they were basically admitting defeat to North Korea. Even Obama called out Sony for this. For the first time, the FBI publicly named the Guardians of Peace. North Korea responded by saying that they had nothing to do with the hack, and said it was likely an American hacker who simply sympathized with North Korea. But I don't think there are many of those around. The FBI also determined that the IP address being used in the hacking was coming from North Korea. There were also some IPs coming from China. This is very normal with North Korean hacking. North Korea has a very limited internet. In fact, they only have what's known as an intranet. This is basically a closed off contained internet just for the country. Nothing gets in and nothing gets out. This means they have a very small number of IP addresses in the country. And that's why they sometimes mask their activities with a Chinese IP address. The Guardians of Peace laid low for a couple of years, but in 2016 they cropped back up again, and this time they came back bigger and badder than ever. In February 2016, they carried out one of the biggest bank heists of all time. 35 fraudulent Swift messages were sent by North Korean hackers. A Swift message is basically a message from one bank to another. For example, telling one bank to send a set amount of money to another bank. These messages were used to illegally transfer for nearly $1 billion. The money belonged to the Central Bank of Bangladesh. So, using the SWIFT system, the Guardians of Peace sent 35 instructions, but only 5 of these were successful. This meant that $101 million was transferred out of the account. 81 million of these dollars were sent to the Philippines, and the other 20 million was sent to Sri Lanka. The remaining 30 transactions, amounting to $850 million, were blocked. And the 20 million dollars North Korea sent to Sri Lanka was actually recovered, and some of the money sent to the Philippines was recovered as well. In the end, North Korea made out with around $58 million. Still a pretty good payday. The rest of the money was laundered from Sri Lanka and the Philippines to North Korea. But you may wonder, why were only 5 of the 35 transactions approved? You see, in the message, they claimed the money was going to an NGO named the Shalika Foundation. But they misspelled the word foundation as foundation. This made the banks very suspicious and they blocked the transactions. Meaning that $850 million was lost all thanks to a simple misspelling. It's safe to say the North Korean hacker behind that misspelling ended up in a work camp. If North Korea succeeded in this, they would have stolen $1 billion, making it the biggest bank heist of all time. These guys are basically playing Cyber GTA. But in the end, North Korea only made off with around 58 million, which is still a lot. It really seemed at this point like the Guardians of Peace just did not care. Even though everyone knew they were behind these attacks, no one could do anything about it. You see, if hackers have government backing, the chance of them being extradited is basically zero. I talked about this already in my video on Russian hackers. Russian hackers do similar things, and despite the FBI knowing basically everything about them, there's nothing that can be done. That is, if they're working with the government, which in the case of North Korea and Russia, they are. But definitely in 2017, the Guardians of Peace took things way too far. They launched something named the WannaCry attack. WannaCry was basically the biggest piece of ransomware to ever hit the globe. And because this thing spread like crazy, it got out of control very quickly. What the virus did was encrypt all files on someone's computer. They would then have to pay a few hundred dollars in Bitcoin to get all of their files unlocked. It's believed this was made to target individuals in the USA and the UK and wealthy countries like that, and also some corporations too who could definitely pay this money. But the big problem was the WannaCry virus spread like wildfire. It quickly spread to poor countries where people had nowhere near this amount of money. A few hundred dollars in Bitcoin is not a whole lot to people in the USA, 
But in countries like India, that's basically like asking someone for a month's salary. It also spread to institutions like hospitals in the UK and universities in China. Of course, this caused massive disruption all over the world. And for all we know, the WannaCry virus cost people their lives. It affected around 200,000 computers in around 150 countries. And mainly countries which aren't even that hostile to North Korea. For example, Russia, India, Ukraine, and Taiwan. But why did WannaCry spread like this? Well, the way WannaCry actually travels is via a crypto worm. Crypto worms are viruses that travel between computer networks. Meaning that if one network in, say, a school is infected, then it will spread to all of the other computers on that network. You can really see how this would get out of control super fast. Now, of course, all of these Bitcoin transactions are visible on the blockchain. And using a simple wallet viewer, I can see how much money the WannaCry virus actually made. Surprisingly, it's not a lot. Despite over 200,000 computers being infected, only 163 people actually paid up. And in total, the hack made North Korea around $72,000. Not exactly a big payday, seeing as their previous hack made around $58 million. But the WannaCry virus hack is important for a different reason. That's because it's the first time North Korean hackers realized how important crypto could be. Using cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Monero, which is even more private than Bitcoin, North Korea can effectively get around any sanctions levied against them. In 2018, Bitcoin and Monero began taking off in South Korea. Lots of young South Koreans were buying into these cryptocurrencies for the first time. The Guardians of Peace noticed this and began launching another attack. They used phishing emails which pretended to be from Hangul Office. Hangul Office is basically like the South Korean version of Microsoft Office. Many students used this and these same students owned a lot of cryptocurrencies. So these students entered their usernames and passwords into these phishing emails sent by North Korean hackers. As soon as they did this, they had their crypto wallets drained. And using this info, North Korean hackers drained the South Korean students' crypto wallets. In total, they stole around $7 million in just one year. One South Korean Bitcoin exchange named Ubit had 17% of all of their assets stolen by North Korean hackers. And they later had to declare bankruptcy because of this. A crypto mining company named NiceHash had 4,500 Bitcoin stolen that same year. That's around $275 million at Bitcoin's peak. In 2019, the Guardians of Peace launched a new malware named Electric Fish. Using this malware, they stole millions of dollars from companies all over the world, including $49 million from a single company in Q8. And if you thought the Guardians of Peace would chill out when it came to COVID, then you'd be wrong. The Guardians of Peace actually hacked various companies in order to steal their vaccine patents. But in March of 2022, the Guardians of Peace carried out their biggest hack yet. They stole $600 million and they did it by hacking a crypto game. They hacked the blockchain network connected to a very popular game named Axie Infinity. Axie Infinity basically allows you to earn money while playing the game. A lot of people play this game as their job. They basically earn cryptocurrency simply from playing the game. The game's virtual currency, AXS, has a market cap of $1.1 billion, meaning that $1.1 billion of real money is in this cryptocurrency. And this is after they were hacked by the Guardians of Peace. It's honestly pretty insane how the Guardians of Peace have stolen billions of dollars over the years. And it seems that with cryptocurrencies, they have hit their jackpot. Cryptos are very unregulated and also fairly anonymous, meaning that it's even harder to go after these hackers. It's safe to say we have not heard the last of the Guardians of Peace. Unfortunately, cyber warfare is the future. If you don't believe me, it's what all of the world's elites have been talking about for the past two years. This is way cheaper and easier for North Korea to do. Instead of wasting millions of dollars firing nukes which simply blow up or fall into the sea, they can run a few lines of code and make millions, if not billions of dollars. Cyber warfare is not expensive to do. All you need is computers and talented hackers. And clearly with the Guardians of Peace, that's exactly what North Korea have. This man is pleading for his life. I entirely beg you, people and government of the DPR Korea, for your forgiveness. He committed a crime in one of the most dangerous countries on the planet, the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea.
but it's what happened after he was arrested that shocked the world. This is his story. Meet Otto Warmbier, an all-American young guy from Ohio. He grew up like many young American men. He graduated second highest in his class at high school, and when it came time for him to go to college, he decided to study abroad in Hong Kong. In 2016, while studying in Hong Kong, he got a very rare opportunity the chance to visit the most closed-off country on the planet. He got invited to take a tour of North Korea. He booked it with a company named Young Pioneer Tours, their slogan being, we take you to destinations your mother would rather you stayed away from. Otto was curious about North Korean culture, and wanted to meet the people of this hermit state. So on December 29th, 2015, he flew from Hong Kong to Beijing and then into North Korea. He was with a fairly large tour group, which included 10 other US citizens. They had planned to spend five days in North Korea. They saw the sights, had lots of food and drinks, and witnessed the amazing New Year's Eve fireworks show in Pyongyang. At 2am on New Year's Day, Otto attempted a challenge many tourists had done before. That is, the fifth floor challenge. Otto and his tour group had been staying at the Yanggakdo Hotel in North Korea. The hotel is famous for its secretive fifth floor. This is the staff-only floor. By trekking the elevator, many tourists have gone to this secret floor before. It has the staff living quarters and propaganda posters all over it. It's very different from the rest of the hotel. It also has the hotel surveillance center in it as well. Every room of the hotel has listening devices and cameras inside them. Normally when tourists are caught on the fifth floor, they're simply told to leave. They pretend to be confused tourists and they don't get in any trouble. But that was not the case with Otto Warmbier. Otto decided to take one of the propaganda posters in the staff-only area as a rare souvenir. He did this at around 2am on New Year's Day. Otto continued his trip and everything went as normal. That was until the 2nd of January 2016. Otto and his tour group were at Pyongyang International Airport. They were about to get on their plane to leave. But that's when two guards came over and simply tapped Otto on the shoulder. They said no words, but they made it clear Otto had to go with them. At the time, one of Otto's friends on the tour group said, well, that's the last we'll ever see of you. Him and Otto both laughed because they assumed it was simply a security check, but there was a dark irony to what his friend had just said, because it was in fact the last time anyone on that tour group saw Otto ever again. The rest of the tour group left the country, but Otto remained in North Korea. News of his arrest was soon broadcast on North Korean TV. North Korea's news agency, KCNA, simply said he'd been arrested for a hostile act against the state. For six weeks, they refused to even say what he'd done wrong. That was until February 29th, 2016. A very bizarre press conference was held about Otto. Otto and many North Korean police were present. Otto had to read from a prepared statement that was written for him. He admitted to stealing a propaganda poster from the hotel's fifth floor. I understand the severity of my crime. I have been very impressed by the Korean government's humanitarian treatment of severe criminals like myself. His confession may have been forced, but he was clearly terrified about what his fate may be. He begged the North Korean government and people for forgiveness. I entirely beg you, people and government of the DPR Korea, for your forgiveness. But none of this was enough. He was charged with the crime of subversion. But despite all of his pleading, Otto was given no sympathy from the North Korean courts. For simply taking a poster, he was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. He would do this at one of North Korea's famous prison camps. Back in the US, the American government was trying to get Otto freed. Otto's parents spoke out many times in the media, saying that the government was not doing enough. They said they had asked Obama and the Department of State, but they had been no help whatsoever. Their son was still stuck in a North Korean prison, unable to contact anyone on the outside. Otto remained in prison for about one and a half years, but behind the scenes, negotiations between the new American government and North Korea were taking place. And soon it was announced that North Korea had released Otto. You may think that's where the story ends, but it's after Otto's release when things really went downhill. 
A North Korean spokesperson said Otto had contracted foodborne botulism and had fallen into a coma after taking a sleeping pill. North Korea had not tried to help Otto and had simply ignored his medical condition. Eventually, Otto was taken to Pyongyang Friendship Hospital. A special plane from the US was then flown to North Korea to take Otto back home. Otto was still in a coma on this medical plane. The plane landed in the USA and Otto was back on American soil, but he was still in a coma and there were no signs of recovery. After a few days, Otto began breathing on his own and blinking his eyes but he was still in a vegetative state, meaning that he had no awareness of his surroundings. He also couldn't move nor speak. According to a brain scan, he had lost lots of brain tissue. This likely meant Otto was deprived of oxygen. Many believe this was a form of torture used on him by North Korea. Otto's father held a press conference saying he wasn't sure what had happened to his son, but he stated that he did not believe anything the North Korean government had told him. On June 19th, 2017 at 2.20 p.m., Otto Warmbier passed away. He was 22 years old. His family released a statement expressing their sadness, and President Trump blamed North Korea for Otto's passing. North Korea responded saying that they were the biggest victim of Otto's passing and said that it was all a smear campaign against North Korea. According to many experts, North Korea's treatment of Otto caused him to pass away. Otto may have stolen a propaganda poster, but North Korea stole his life. A funeral was held for Otto at his high school, more than 2,500 people attended, and many politicians all over the US condemned North Korea. This led to the US government banning any American tourists from visiting North Korea. In April 2018, Otto's parents sued the North Korean government. They accused North Korea of torture and murder. North Korea did not contest the case in court, and because they did not respond, they were found guilty by default judgment. North Korea was ordered to pay $501 million in damages to Otto's parents. But of course, there's no real way to enforce this. However, in 2019, a North Korean cargo ship was seized. This was then sold on by the US government with the proceeds going to Otto's family. But no amount of money can ever bring Otto back. Otto's parents have to live with the fact that their son's life was taken by the North Korean government. North Korea is a fascinating country, and the ordinary citizens are probably great decent people, but it's sad they have to live under such an authoritarian and evil government. Hopefully one day things will change in the Hermit Kingdom, but right now the Kim Dynasty continues to rule North Korea with an iron fist.